meaning of the fight for the standard, a surviving piece of Leonardo da Vinci's mural Balabangiari, and the reasoning behind its location, part A. Hi, I am Antonio Casella. Today, I am applying the Logos Neuropsychological Heuristics to explain the meaning and the reasoning I made in 2017 to expose the hidden location of Leonardo da Vinci's vanished fight for the standard, the centerpiece of his ruined mural Balvangiari. The corresponding playlist is Uncovering da Vinci's Fight for the Standard. The Battle of Vangiari was won in 1440 by the Republic of Florence against the Visconti family at the helm of the Duchy of Milan before the coming of the Sforza. Leonardo da Vinci painted the mural Battle of Vangiari in 1504-1506 on a wall of Florence's Palazzo della Signoria, today's Palazzo Vecchio. The fight for the standard faded from public view in the second half of the 16th century, while the painter architect Giorgio Vasari was renewing that palace on orders of Cosima I, the Grand Duke of Tuscany. The copy reproduced here, which measures 25 by 17 inches, was made in great part by a 16th century artist before the Flemish Baroque painter Peter Paul Rubens purchased and enriched it in 1603 when he visited Florence. I assume that Rubens' essentially colorless fight for the standard, kept at the Louvre Museum in Paris, is ten times smaller than Leonardo's cartoon on the same matter. In any case, new data support the view that the dimensions of the fight for the standard are somewhat smaller. For example, 4.29 by 6 meters. There are other small and colorful copies of Leonardo's central piece of the Battle of Bangieri, Isabel Grazia and the Tabla Doria, 45 by 34 inches, hosted presently by Florence's Uffizi Gallery. But I will base my explanation on Rubens' copy. Leonardo's fight for the standard depicts the unsuccessful attempt of two horsemen the contottiere Niccolò Piccinino, the central rider, and his son Francesco, the first rider on the left, paid by the Duke of Milan, to seize in 1440, on the plain of Anghiari, the standard of the Florentine Venetian Papal League from the hands of their captains, Ludovico Trevisan and Gian Antonio Orsini. The depiction of the eastern wall of the hall of the 500 here reports on the lower right, the least and highest dimensions of the fight for the standard, and my conclusion that the wounded but surviving centerpiece of the Battle of Anghiari lies hidden under Giorgio Vasari's Battle of Marciano, made in the second half of the 16th century. Giorgio Vasari elevated by seven meters the ceiling of that hall and hid both the melted down top portion of Leonardo's Battle of Anghiari and its surviving central imagery, or the fight for the standard. After Vasari built, around 1565, a one-kilometer corridor between Palazzo della Signoria and Palazzo Pitti, owned by Eliano from Toledo, wife to Cosimo I, the Palazzo della Signoria became Palazzo Vecchio. The largest hall in Italy had been commissioned at Palazzo Vecchio in 1494 by a Puritan preacher and de facto head of the Republic of Florence, the friar Girolamo Savonarola. Savonarola could not oust Lorenzo the Magnificent, but in the end he ousted the governing branch of the Medici family of bankers from that city. Savonarola's aim was to use that hall to house a council of 1,000 members in two rotations of 500 people. When he commissioned the hall of the 500, the Puritan Savonarola 
could not know that the papacy, whose corruption he denounced, would instigate his enemies to arrest him in 1498 and finally hang him and burn his body that same year in the square in front of the palace. Two years later, Leonardo da Vinci entered Tuscany from Milan after realizing that Ludovico il Moro, his Sforza, Duke patron there, would never escape the prison imposed by the King of France, Louis XII. In the first three years of his return to Tuscany, Leonardo was military engineer to Cesare Borgia, the protagonist of Niccolò Machiavelli's master writing The Prince. Cesare had changed a cardinal hat for one of the condottiere, under the support of his father, the Spanish Pope Alexander VI, and the same character who had excommunicated Savonarola. Memory of this period of Leonardo's life as topographer can be found in the water scenery behind his Mona Lisa. In 1504, Leonardo signed a contract with Pier Soderini, the head of the Republic of Florence, after the death of Girolamo Savonarola, to paint a mural of the Battle of the Anghiari in the Hall of the Vavandred at Florence's Palazzo Vecchio. However, due to a wrong application of the Egyptian, Greek, Roman, heat-driven and caustic painting technique, the top part of his mural melted down. Although he left his work unfinished, the surviving horses of his fight for the standard were admired for about half a century and copied before vanishing under Vasari's ironic look. Understanding the meaning of the fight for the standard would help us overcome three major problems. A. The arrival in the 21st century of an environmental avalanche and its concomitant Holodomor, death by hunger, in Ukrainian, and Sprahamor, death by thirst, within global warming. B. The unilateral use of weapons of mass destruction, WMD, by terrorists against a major city or country, and C, the ongoing extermination of non-human species. Before explaining how I found the location of the fight for the standard, I will emphasize that Leonardo da Vinci showed in a 1481 painting, The Adoration of the Magi, before leaving Tuscany for Milan, that creativity in humans uses four modes of attention. The first attention, plus one, can be symbolized by a fight among inimical horsemen in the upper part of Leonardo's Adoration of the Magi. In an attempt to solve a problem, the first stare, the same painting, the second attention, two, which I link to the quantum coherence missing in autism, helps us reach the edge of madness, minus one. The third attention is reflected by the vision of will, three, through which we overcome madness when we win with others. The last mode of attention is precisely the madness, minus one, that surrounds both schizophrenics who cannot return to shared reality and characters unable to win with others. Leonardo, lower right, hid his knowledge of the principles of creativity in his works Adoration of the Magi, upper left, Vitruvian Man, lower left, Nativity, center, and Mona Lisa, upper right. In the Vitruvian Man, for example, lower your arms to pass from autism, plus one, to quantum coherence, two. Lower your feet to reach the edge of schizophrenia, minus one and raise again your arms to reach the third attention tree of the artist that wants to win with the two extremes of a confrontation. The two angels of the nativity, for example, show that Leonardo knew that coherence in the second attention too may dwell in separate places simultaneously, ubiquity in time. And the angel of the coherence tree makes the door that allows us to return to a renovated shared reality. Beyond the infinite speed of quantum coherence, from upper left to upper right, our ability to share with others 
the same space at the same time, coincidence in quantum decoherence at the lower right. For example, when we say, put yourself in my shoes, helps us pass from the vision of how to solve a problem to the will by which we win with whoever criticizes or opposes our doings. In approaching a green traffic light, our explicit and autistic consciousness, plus one, would like to press the accelerator in believing that a red signal will stop whoever opposes our aims. Still, suppose that our implicit self, the invisible artistic side of ours, that travels simultaneously the ubiquity to in our car and in the car of a competing driver, becomes aware of two potential outcomes. A, that the competing driver minus one will not stop, and B, that both cars will end up crossing simultaneously the next intersection. In that case, the principles of locality and impenetrability, the classical computing of space-time at the left, might excite both the death of the crazy competing driver minus one and the death of our explicit self plus one. However, the principle of coincidence right within the hyperspace of the virtual crash sustained by the quantum computing that helps a prudent driver would save both chauffeurs from dying by recommending our lively explicit self to press the brake instead of pressing the accelerator. We can win with others by joining three classical computing in which plus one opposes minus one with quantum computing too. The first with the second attention or our autistic with our artistic side within our personal third point. On the wake of our third point in Leonardo's Vitruvian Man, the reality and importance of the third attention makes the meaning of Leonardo da Vinci's fight for the standard. Classical computing is exemplified by the five stages in preschool development viewed by Jean Piaget. That Swiss psychologist wrote in the late 40s that normal children may progress from detecting the perfect control of the self at birth to linking visible perceptions at age one to linking concepts around age seven years. Piaget missed the second vector of creative intelligence, the red band, because he did not compare autistic to non-autistic children. A proof of the limits of his research is the fact that he associated to egoism one, the pretend play two of two years old. By contrast, I believe that the second attention may change into the possibility of altruism three and of the third attention, exemplified by Leonardo's fight for the standard and by the return of the Mesoamerican demigod Quetzalcoatl. I attribute to walking up the cognitive stairs of quantum computing too, dreamt by the Jewish patriarch Jacob at Bethel, on the journey to the dwelling of his uncle Laban, the ability of five-year-olds to pass false belief tests, the ability of a two-year-old to pretend that she is the mother of a doll, and the ability of a one-year-old girl to tease an innocent visitor. By offering a sweet without giving it. And I attribute to quantum decoherence three, as did the angels who walked down the stairs of quantum computing, the decision of a one-year-old girl to give her candy away to a visitor, a two-year-old actress to amuse her mother, a five-year-old to lie to her father, in protecting her younger brother from being punished severely, and of Israel to win with the face of God at Penuel. At Penuel, Israel's will won with God in the same way that Muhammad returned from Burak from the furthest mosque to the black stone in Mecca. And Quetzalcoatl will return with the secret of the third attention, the vision about how to solve a problem and the will to win with our enemies. That is the same secret enclosed Leonardo's fight for the standard. This documentary is available at YouTube and the website researchautism.com.